Here we have a vector r in the ij plane. Its length or magnitude, which is denoted by putting vertical lines on either side of the vector, is 3 root 2. However, very often we will just show the letter without an arrow to represent the magnitude of the vector. Now this can be a source of confusion if we're dealing with vectors all lying on one line where there are only two directions to consider. You will see that situation in when we discuss linear motion in later videos. But in this video I want to make it clear that a letter without an arrow on it refers to the magnitude of the corresponding vector. This quantity is not a vector, it's a scalar. So we will use this notation more often. Theta is the symbol that's often used for the angle measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis to the vector. From basic trigonometry we can work out the two short sides of this right angle triangle. This side here is adjacent to 45 degrees in this right angle triangle. So to find this adjacent side we multiply the hypotenuse by the cos of 45 degrees. That just comes from the fact that the cos of 45 degrees is adjacent, which is x, which is the x value of this point here, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3 root 2, and then we just cross multiply. Also, to get the side opposite 45 degrees, we multiply the hypotenuse by the sine of 45 degrees. That comes from the fact that the sine of 45 degrees is the side opposite 45 degrees in this right angle triangle, which is actually the y value of this point. So this distance is the y value of this point, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3 root 2, and then we just cross multiply. In the previous video, we talked about unit vector i, which points in the positive x direction. Its length is 1, so its tail is at the origin, and its head is at plus 1. Because this side of the right angle triangle has length 3 root 2 cos 45, we can then say that this vector here, this horizontal vector whose tail is at the origin and whose head is at this point here, must be the length 3 root 2 cos 45 multiplied by vector i, because vector i has just a length of 1. So here we have this horizontal vector. It's 3 root 2 cos 45 times unit vector i. Similarly, we saw that unit vector j is a vector of length 1 pointing in the positive y direction. So this vector here, which is the side opposite 45 degrees in the right angle triangle, is 3 root 2 sine 45 multiplied by j. So j is a length of 1, so j is scaled up by the factor 3 root 2 sine 45. So now by the triangle law, we can add this vector here onto this vector here to get vector r. In sword form, the cos of 45 is 1 over root 2. So when we plug in 1 over root 2, we get 3i. Similarly, the sine of 45 is also 1 over root 2. So we now have vector r. It is 3i plus 3j. We can clearly see from the diagram that the coordinates of this point are 3 comma 3. Another way to understand what I just did is to consider the unit circle of trigonometry. From trigonometry, the coordinates of a point on the unit circle, that is a circle with a radius of 1, are given by cos theta sine theta, where theta is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So here's the positive x-axis, and in this case theta is 45 degrees. So the coordinates of this point are cos 45 comma sine 45. We know that our vector r makes an angle of 45 degrees with the positive x-axis. So we can actually get vector r by scaling up this unit vector here. How much do we scale it up by? Well, this vector has a length of 1, so if we multiply it by 3 root 2, we will get a vector, we, we will get the vector r. If we call this vector u, u for unit vector, we will see that it is given by cos 45i plus sine 45j. In other words, the x component of this vector, or the i component, is, is cos 45 
times unit vector i. So the the magnitude of the x component is cos 45. If we multiply that magnitude cos 45 by unit vector i, we will have this vector shown here in blue. And the other component that makes up vector u, this vertical component pointing vertically upwards, has magnitude sine 45. So if we multiply sine 45 by unit the unit vector j, we will have this vertical vector. The sum of these two blue vectors by the triangle law gives us vector u. So we just sum the two vectors. So here is vector r. It's in the same direction as vector u, but it's vector u scaled up by the factor 3 root 2. So the magnitude of r is 3 root 2. The magnitude of u, of course, is 1. So we just multiply 3 root 2 by this. So that's another way to, to think of vector r. In general, we can write any vector in the ij plane, th where we call the vector r as r cos theta i plus r sine theta j, where r without the arrow is the magnitude of vector r. r cos theta is the i, or x component, of vector r. So that's this distance here. It just comes from basic trigonometry. We multiply the hypotenuse by the cos of theta. In this example, theta is 45 degrees. So r cos theta gives us the x or i component of the vector. And if we multiply the hypotenuse r by the sine of theta, we get the y or x component, or j component of vector r. Of course, I'm only showing the lengths of the components here. To actually get this vector, we have to multiply the length of it, which is r cos theta, by unit vector i. So we get that. And to get this vector here, we multiply the length or magnitude of this vector, r sine theta, by unit vector j. And then we use the triangle law to add these together to get vector r. We could call the x or i component of r, r sub x, and the y or j component of r, r sub y. You see the connection between the magnitude of r and the two components, r x and r y. That connection comes from Pythagoras' theorem, because we have a right angle triangle here. We could sub r cos theta for r x and r sine theta for r y to see the trigonometry. So. We take r cos theta and square it, and we take r sine theta and square it, factorize r squared out. We get the square root of r squared, which is r. Now, this is a famous identity in trigonometry. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 for any value of theta. So, again, everything checks out. Another thing to notice is that if we take r y and divide by r x, we get r sine theta over r cos theta. Now, sine theta over cos theta is tan theta. So knowing this fact, we have a way to find the angle between the positive x-axis and the vector. In our example, r is 3i plus 3j, so ry over rx is 3 over 3, which is 1. We put this equal to tan theta. Uh, we know that theta has to be an acute angle, because the head of vector r is in this first quadrant. So we know that we, theta is 45 degrees, because the tan of 45 degrees is 1. Let's look at this vector in the second quadrant. The coordinates of the head of this vector are minus 2, comma 3. So I'm calling this vector r. We know that it's minus 2i plus 3j. Its magnitude, r without an arrow, is got by Pythagoras' theorem. So we square the components and sum them. Minus 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, so we get root 13. Now we're interested in getting theta. Theta, remember, is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. We know from the previous part that the I or y or j component divided by the x or i component gives us the tan of theta. So we know the tan of theta is 3 over minus 2. If you get the inverse tan of minus 3 halves using your calculator, you will probably get this answer here, minus 56.3 degrees. Now, 
It is true that the tan of minus 56.3 is minus 3 halves, of course, but this is not the only angle whose tan is minus 3 halves. To see what an angle of minus 56.3 degrees looks like, we have to measure anti sorry clockwise from the positive x-axis. Angles measured clockwise are negative. Of course, we know that this cannot be the answer because we know from the vector that it is a vector in this quadrant here. So theta is an angle between must be an angle between 90 and 180 degrees. In other words, theta is an obtuse angle. So we know that this can't be the answer. But of course, these we can easily work out theta if we simply take 56.3 from 180. So here's another value for uh, theta. And you can easily check if you get the tan of 123.69 degrees, you will indeed get minus 3 halves. So we have to take this value and add it to 180 to get the correct value that we need. We're always using um, the convention where we measure anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. We could check the values of r and theta that we got by referring back to the general form of a vector in the ij plane. We could calculate r cos theta and r sine theta. If we calculate r cos theta for this example, we should get minus 2. And if we calculate r sine theta for this example, we should get plus 3. Now let's take a vector in the third quadrant. We see that the coordinates of this point are minus 3, minus 1. So the vector is minus 3i minus 1j. We can see that the magnitude of this vector is the square root of rx squared plus ry squared, which is root 10. Now what about theta? Well, we can see from where this vector is that theta is a reflex angle. It's an angle that is between 180 and 270 degrees. We know that ry over rx gives us tan of theta, so minus 1 over minus 3 is tan of theta. If you go to your calculator and get the inverse tan of 1 third, you get 18.43 degrees. Obviously, th this is not the only theta whose tan is 1 third. So how do we find this angle here? Well, as a matter of fact, the other possible answer for theta is got by adding 18.43 onto 180 degrees. As a matter of fact, the angle in here is 18.43. This ties in with the cast rule in trigonometry. C-A-S-T. For this situation, the tan of theta is positive. It's plus one third. So we need to look to the quadrants where the tan is positive. In this quadrant, all ratios are positive, including tan. So an angle of 18.43 gives us a positive value for tan. It gives us plus one third. 18.43 is an angle in this quadrant here. It's this angle here. But an angle in the T quadrant also gives us a positive value for tan. If you get the tan of this angle here, you will indeed get one third. Finally, let's consider a vector in the fourth quadrant. The head of this vector has coordinates 2, minus 1. So if I call this vector r, it is 2i minus 1j. Its magnitude is got by Pythagoras. We just square each component. So we get root 5. What about theta? Theta is measured anti-clockwise from the positive axis, positive x-axis. So as before, we get our y over our x. So we put minus 1 over 2. So we know that the tan of this angle, theta, is minus a half. You go to your calculator, see what that gives you. To two decimal places, my calculator gives me minus 26.57 degrees. Obviously, this, can't, this is not the answer we're looking for. Theta is a reflex angle that's between 270 and 360 degrees. It's positive, of course. This angle here that the calculator, well, at least my calculator gives me, 
is a negative angle, so it's measured clockwise from the positive x-axis. As a matter of fact, it's this angle here. So we can see how to get angle theta. We simply just add 360 onto this. So with the value displayed in your calculator, don't ch change anything, just add 360. You can check by just getting the tan of this angle and you'll see you'll get minus 0.5. So, this is the form we want theta to be. We want it to be positive. It's the an mismeasured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis to the vector. We could actually use this form. These two angles are equivalent. But we normally prefer to use the positive form. 